When 69-year-old Carl Brandt bought this peaceful 40-acre hobby farm eight years ago, he fell in love with the land. It's very private and I like it. It's a beautiful place to be. I plant a lot of vegetables. I've got a big garden and uh, yeah, maintain the house and make sure I don't freeze in the winter. I cut a lot of firewood. Happy to be alone with his German shepherd Sheba, Carl worked the land and fixed his cars. But in a harrowing turn of events, his idyllic and isolated surroundings nearly cost him his life. On June 13th, Carl set out to cut down some dead trees. I had the chainsaw and the machines ready and with the ATV and I went not far away from the house, about 400 feet. And the tree wouldn't fall down and it was hanging on, on top on another tree and then I cut that one too to make sure they both fall together but that didn't happen and then uh, there was a small branch and I cut the third one off on the bottom and then yeah both of them came down came down on Carl the massive impact dislocated Carl's hip broke his back and paralyzed one arm Incredibly, Carl managed to drag his body halfway back to the house, but the pain became too much. He settled here in this small patch of dirt, covering his body with dried leaves to protect against weather and insects. But with no food or water and no cell phone, Carl spent every passing hour wondering if he would ever be found. Oh, I had the watch on and I put the watch in front of me to watch the time. Of course the family was the most important thing. It went through my mind every 10 seconds. <laughs> nothing had to, nothing else mattered. Funny enough, I slept quite a bit till Sheba came now and then and she passed. And because I was so dry, I just said to Sheba, kiss, kiss, and she licked my face. No, I was in pain, but I wasn't dead. He climbed over the log on this way because he Zara Brandt is one of Carl's four daughters who became increasingly worried when they hadn't heard from him in days. If not every other day, then we email each other. But when I hadn't heard from him in four days when, when the accident happened, I kind of, I knew that something was wrong. Carl had recently listed his property for sale, hoping to stay in the country but be a bit closer to town. The family decided to call Carl's real estate agent, David Kogan, to check in. No, I drove up the driveway. It was about 8 o'clock at night. Kogan didn't even make it to the house when Sheba ran over barking. And that's when I knew something was up. It was right here. Because this pile of... This was right where he, he was lying on his right-hand side. His head was here and his, his legs were down here. But this was something he had piled up. All this uh, leaf and pine cone and what have you. And that's what he had put on his body. And that's what he had attempted to, uh, to keep the bugs away with. While we were waiting for the EMS, he, sp he spent some time telling me that he thought the day before, which was Friday, that he wouldn't make it. If, so that's, you know, that's night number four. Yeah, Friday night was the fourth night. So, uh, you know, and if it went into another day, who knows what would have happened? You know, you never know. This is where the hip should be, and it's completely out of the socket. Dr. Hans Crater operated on Carl when he arrived at Sunnybrook and says he's never encountered a case like this one. The incredible pain uh, with these injuries uh, would prevent most people from, from even attempting to move. You know, I couldn't believe this story. I, I thought, you know, how could this man survive? To me, this is the reason that I went into this field, you know, it's, uh, it's really uh, quite an inspiration to me. I don't give up. I mean, life carries on, don't give up. Okay, so do one side and then the other side. Yes. Carl says he's dealing well with what happened to him and that most of the healing is now physical. After spending a few weeks at Sunnybrook, Carl was transferred to St. John's Rehab, where he's trying his best to be able to do everything he did before, except for one. 
I don't think I will go cut wood. It would have been cheaper to buy it. <laughs> With Sunnyview, I'm Monica Mattis.